So this um, this review video is about the surface area to volume ratio, um, and a couple of things that it helps us answer is why cells are so small, or that's that's a ma the main question was why it's relevant in the cell unit. So it's answering the question of why cells are so small. And another question that I have for you to just maybe uh, think a little bit about: Do elephants have bigger cells than us? They are much bigger organisms. Does that mean that they have bigger cells, or does it mean that they have simply more cells than we do? Um, and I'll I'll go ahead and er, uh, direct you into this. It's the second question that they they have more cells than we do because um, cell size has to remain um, small um, in order to be efficient. So when we talk about cell uh, surface area to um, volume ratio, um, it brings to mind a couple of things that we've talked about before. So if you remember back to our photosynthesis unit, and we had we had our chloroplasts that had these pancake structures. Um, we call these things thylakoids, and the stacks of them were called grana, um, similarly granum, but all plural uh, grana, and this is where the light dependent reaction occurred. These thylakoids actually, by being small pancake-like structures, increase the surface area while decreasing the volume, um, so that more things can move in and out of the thylakoids, um, and there's less stuff inside, so there's less uh, places that those things that are coming in and out need to, to go or leave. Um, and so really the goal of cells, we think, you know, quote unquote goal, uh, is to have a high surface area to volume ratio. That means having a lot more surface area than volume. Um, a lot more surrounding space or edges to the three-dimensional structure than the volume um, of stuff within. The other example that we talked about was the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, if we've got our mitochondria, um, we had this inner fold that was all wavy, and um, the reason that this is all wavy is because of the reaction that actually occurs here. Um, if you remember correctly uh, from our previous unit, it's the electron transfer chain. And the electron transfer chain actually happens across this inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, therefore, the more membrane there is, the more electron transport chain can happen. Therefore, the more NADH and FADH2s combined with the oxygen from aerobic respiration um, can react um, using ATP synthase that is embedded into this phospholipid bilayer of the intermitochondrial membrane to make more and more ATP, making this process highly efficient um, from a single glucose molecule. So this increased surface area um, allows more reactions to occur um, in the electron, more electron chain, transport chain reactions to occur, making more and more ATP, which is definitely um, one method in which the organism in which the mitochondria um, exists increases its evolutionary uh, fitness um, because it has to consume less um, and is able to generate more ATP quickly and efficiently. Um, so that's, and we see that with the cell size as well. A cell's got to be relatively small. Remember, we're talking about for prokaryotic cells, um, less than 10 micrometers, and for eukaryotic cells, um, they're greater than 10 micrometers, but generally not much um, bigger than 100 micrometers as a max, uh, for as a general rule. We do have some exceptions, um, but that's, we're talking about a tenth of a millimeter. Um, as a max. So it's quite small and it's in order to increase the surface area. We also see other examples like in your small intestines. If you remember correctly from um, our unit on biochemistry, the small intestine is the thing that is uh, the organ that's absorbing nutrients from the food that we eat. They've been broken down by enzymes from the moment that we eat them and mechanically by chewing and our, and our stomach grinding it up. Um, but those, those um, monomers that were broken down from the polymers get absorbed into your bloodstream with the small intestines. Well, you better believe that the small intestines have a high surface area. Um, there are all kinds of structures there that uh, we'll learn about in the future, but that increase the surface area so that more monomers can uh, cross the cell membranes into the bloodstream. Um, additionally, your lungs have large structures in them called alveoli, which increase the surface area so that more oxygen can move in when you breathe into your bloodstream to get to the mitochondria for this electron transport chain. And the CO2 that comes out of 
um, the Krebs cycle um, can find its way to um, your bloodstream and out of your bloodstream back into your lungs so that when you breathe out you're exhaling that carbon dioxide so it's all about surface area and volume ratio um, and so cells need to remain small to increase the surface area reduce the volume um, to be highly efficient and if they were not able to be efficient um, they would die they would not get the nutrients they need in and the toxic material out um, so again it needs a high surface area low volume um, in other words, a high surface area to volume ratio. And as a last note, um, I think it's important to understand that as the volume increases, um, uh, well, let's say the volume increases at a faster rate than surface area. And that's because volume is measured um, as a cubic measurement. Um, we're multiplying something by itself three times, length times width times height, where a surface area is really, um, if we're talking about a cube, it's got six sides, but most cells are not cubes, um, but it's really just a, um, it's a squared function. Um, okay, so it's a uh, little length times width, whereas volume is length times width times height. So as a cell gets bigger, its volume increases at a faster rate than the surface area. So cells have to remain small for that reason.